Sergey the Crusher Kovalev's former trainer reacts to his stoppage loss to Elita Alvarez. Says Kovalev got his ass whooped. Stay tuned. Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work in. Shout out to RingTV.com. This, I'm going to try to get through it. The link is in the description. They did a, a lengthy interview, an article, with former Sergey Kovalev trainer John David Jackson, former boxer himself, who fought the likes of Bernard Hopkins back in his heyday. And he reacts to Kovalev's recent loss, his third loss to a new guy, not Andre Ward, to a leader Alvarez. And Jackson says he wasn't surprised at all. So I want to talk about it. I think this is a very good interview. And he says, John David Jackson, I'm just going to read some quotes and give my thoughts. He says, before I begin here, Kovalev is right when he says I didn't train him the last fight. I didn't because he didn't want to be trained. He trained himself. And it says, Jackson, who has a strong reputation as a straight talker, says he wasn't surprised Kovalev was stopped. He says, not at all, Jackson said. I called a friend of mine in London and found out the result. It's why I say he was right when he said I didn't train him. I wasn't going to waste my time trying to teach or show him anything if he wasn't willing to learn. He was real hard to work with. He said I didn't work with him for the first Andre Ward fight. He lied about that, but the second fight, he's right. I didn't work with him at all. He was bringing in new people to train him every day. And the reason why it's all true is that Don Turner saw everything. I watched and thought this was the blind leading the blind. Kovalev wanted me out of the way, so I got out of the way. When he was winning, things were great. As soon as he lost, it was my fault. Then the article says signs came back early that Jackson might have difficult time with Kovalev. And he says, and I quote, Jackson says, the first time I met the guy, I cussed him out. He was a pain to work with. I tried to show him a move and he told me he couldn't do that. That came the very first day. I stayed with him because I made a promise to Don Turner that I would do my best with him. And Kathy Duva is a sweetheart. I didn't want to leave her strapped in any way. But from day one, it was a struggle for me to try and work with this guy because he swore he knew everything from training back in Russia. Right? He came up to me and said, John, you're pushing me too hard. You can't train me that way. I told him that is my job to get the most out of him during camp. No fighter ever said that to me before or since. I pushed my fighters to the limit to see what they can do. After that, he changed. Everything about him changed. He's a dirt ball, right? This fight against Elita Alvarez proved what I was saying all along. He trained himself for that fight. I know it. I saw Kovalev tired by round four. For a world-class fighter, he tired fast. He had no game plan. He had no defense. His game plan was to knock the kid out. Once the kid proved he could take Sergey's punches, he was done. He was done. I put time into him for the first ward fight. I would show him things for that fight, but whatever respect he may have had for me, it was long gone by then. I was basically just taking up space. Watch that fight again and you'll see Sergey won the first half of that fight. He did enough to win and I honestly think he did win the first Andre Ward fight. For as much of a asshole as Kovalev is, I'll give him credit for that. He won the first Ward fight. He brought this clown in for the first Ward fight and as we were walking down the aisle toward the ring, then he told me this guy will do all the talking in the corner. I saw he was winning and I let the other guy do the talking. Around rounds seven or eight, I was done. I let the other guy do all the talking because Kovalev wasn't doing what I was asking him to do anyway. I wasn't his babysitter. If he couldn't sit down there and accept what I was showing him to win the fight, why bother? The first half of the Andre Ward fight, I talked to him. The second half, he wanted the other guy to talk and I got out of the way. In the beginning, whatever I asked him to do, he did. I pushed him hard. He's like really going in right now. 
Then Jackson's stress, success, and money changed everything. So I guess that's what he's attributing to Kovalev's change in demeanor. If you didn't give him water when he wanted, he had to fit. This is a quote. So when he got stopped, I wasn't surprised. Karma's a bitch. The thing he had been doing to everyone around him came back to bite him in the ass. I wasn't happy when I heard he got stopped, but I will say he got what he deserved. Without proper training, he got his ass whipped. There was no shock at all there. The handwriting was on the wall. He owes a lot to Kathy Duva and Jolene, who's the matchmaker at main events, but do you think he really appreciates them? Kathy went out of her way to move this clown. He wanted more money, and Kathy gave up quite a lot to make him happy. She rearranged things to satisfy him. Kathy and Jolene made him. One day, Sergey really pissed me off when he said, I made myself a world champion. I asked him, Kathy didn't do anything for you, Jolene or Igis Clemens, your manager. They didn't do anything for you. You did this all on your own. He says, yeah. I, I asked, maybe he didn't understand my English. He thinks he did everything himself to make him a champion. Sergey Kovalev is a borderline racist. He shows it in certain ways. I defended his ass more than a few times. Sergey didn't want either me or Don Turner to work with him. He is good at putting the persona on, but when he's alone, he's a raw, nasty person. Even his own people talk about him like a dog behind his back. I kid you not, his so-called friends couldn't stand him. Wow, he's going in, man. He forgot what made him successful was hard work. I won't say success made him soft, but the more success he had, the less hungry he became. The more money he made, the less he wanted to train. He ran like my grandmother, and she's dead. He ran her pace. Wow, he says she ran like my grandmother, and she's dead. We were running one day, and I lapped him four times. And he was in his early 30s, and I'm in my early 50s. He shouldn't. He should have been lapping me. His work ethic was terrible. He's a front runner who people have figured out. I used to tell his sparring partners not to stand in front of him. Make him work because if you do stand in front of him, he's gonna hurt you. If you make him work, it would help him in two ways. First, it's gonna make him realize he's not who he thinks he is. Secondly, he's gonna have to learn how to box. In all fairness to Kovalev, when he wants to, he can box. He's not the best, but he could box a little bit. I think the great regret is if he would have just listened to me and learned his trade better, he would have been a better all around fighter. If his punches didn't hurt you, he would break down mentally. He has that bullies mentality. Kathy Duva and Jolene did a great job with him and please print that. Jolene did the matchmaking and, and Kathy did everything else. They're two salt of the earth type of people who deserve good things. Kovalev is a crybaby who blames everyone else for his downfall. He needs to look in the mirror and the person he sees is the person that is the cause for his downfall all around. Wow. Anyway, to read it yourself, just go to the link in the description. John David Jackson once again goes in. I mean, he pretty much tells you what I've been telling you. And once again, Ego's Army, New Media, we see who the statements that I make on my channel and you, you find it corroborated by professional fighters, former fighters, trainers, former champions, people in the industry. Like, I'm not just out here bumping my gums saying stuff. You know, I do say stuff and I, I mean it, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's it's great. Like John David Jackson is telling you what I've been telling you. Kovalev, he, he literally said the exact same thing. And I've been telling you guys this. Kovalev has a bully mentality, you know? Bully mentality. And the moment you stand up to a bully and then you show him that, no, you, I'm not giving you my lunch money no more. You know what I'm saying? Like you could have for 200 days out of the year, out of 365 days, 200 the first 200 days you gave up your lunch money anytime he asked right because you didn't want to get in the fight but then you're hungry one day and you're like fuck that you know what i mean i'm no no kovalev i'm not giving you my lunch money and he's like oh, i will destroy you in front of everyone and you're like well you just got to destroy me then and then he swings at you and you slip it and then you sock him and then it's the unraveling because the bully wasn't prepared for that the bully is not is not prepared for like the friction they they just want to mow you down and roll over you and if they could do that like jean pascal then they're they're happy you know it's, it's similar and i hate to say this but i watch a lot of shows like forensic files and they have like the forensic pathologists and uh the psychologists that put you in the mindset and the, it's like 
that's like some of the rapists on the show is they rape and it's it's a power thing you know they like when people are terrified and, and crying and, and begging and pleading and scared you know they thrive on that but the cases you know like where guys the rapist ends up getting caught is because a woman was really tough and really strong and although she might have been scared she fought back she's gouging and scratching and kicking and screaming she frees herself gets up and starts running and then he doesn't know what the fuck to do because he's not used to that he wants he wants them rendered powerless right while he does this like ungodly thing and takes that from that woman you know and that's like a real psychological thing it's it's a power thing you know i actually went to high school with the dude and then there was like a this serial rapist in, in the city and everyone was like fear like fearful he was like coming home waiting and it was a guy i went to school and graduated with we didn't obviously we didn't know nobody knew it was like living some kind of crazy secret life but he, he ended up getting caught and it was kind of the same thing he was like praying on like older women and stuff like that and then he ended up getting caught because it was a person who stood their ground a bit you know what i'm saying and then it just everything fell into place and he dropped something and then they tied it back to him whatever boom 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 so that's the, this is the same kind of mentality as the bully mentality and andre ward was the first to to show that blueprint to really show it you know what i mean because john pascal actually hurt kovalev you know he hurt kovalev in the first fight I don't know about the second fight, but he hurt him in the first fight, but he just doesn't have the the intelligence or the ring IQ or whatever to have to keep doing it. You know, and Kovalev still got to him, but Andre Ward, Olympic gold medalist, you know what I mean? From a rough place, Oakland Hayward, like he was not going to back down. He's not going to let you like embarrass him. If you take anything from him, it's because you were the better man. You, you act, he has heart, you know what I'm saying? He hasn't lost since he was like 12 years old. You're like, you really going to have to work for that. You know, nothing's going to come easy. And that was the beginning and the end of Kovalev, you know? And I think Andre Ward exploited that. Now, I'm not taking anything away from a leader Alvarez, right? But Ward was the one to, to first show that, that Kovalev had the classic bully mentality. And as far as the racist shit, I mean, the monkey shirts and saying stuff that that roughly translates to the N word. Kovalev just sounds like a nasty person, and it does sound like he's racist, right? And he would do little things, and, and it just sounds like all the stuff is true. Like uh, John David Jackson said in a previous interview that Kovalev puts uh, the Crusher K emblem on on everything, and like. It just sounded like he got a little bit too big for his britches. And the funny thing is, people, they overlook that. I don't know. I don't know if it's the complexion or what, but they overlooked that with Kovalev. And the thing I respect about Floyd Mayweather, people bring up, old oh, domestic violence or um, what he's done outside the ring. You know, just little stuff. They don't like his trash or whatever. But you got to respect Floyd Mayweather for 20 plus years in this game has never showed a lack of discipline. And then you hear from John David Jackson, he's telling you the more money Kovalev got, the the less he was grinding for it. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to train as hard. And I would have to agree just based on his performances. He reached the pinnacle with Andre Ward. That was probably his biggest purse, maybe even to this day, you know, the two Ward fights. And those were not his best performances. You know, and then he's fighting the leader Alvarez. And he doesn't look the same from the war fight. And I told you how he's just like hung up on on what happened in the war fights and saying war retired because of him. It's just, it's like that wasn't healthy because that shows signs of like that you're delusional. You know what I mean? The way you're thinking about things, you're not accepting defeat, you're not accepting your loss, and you're not being realistic. So it's really hard to move on. And that's kind of what John David Jackson's saying here. He says karma is a bitch. It came back to bite him in the ass, like the not working hard, you know, and there's a lot of people like that. They're very good. They're very talented when things are on the up and up. You know, I know some people who have had money and I'm not trying to get too deep in, you know, with the analogies or whatever. But I know people, for example, it's like me. I've been at all spectrums. I've been at spots where my money was really cool. I've been at spots where my money was really bad and I was really broke and, you know what I mean, had had very little money to my name and, you know what I mean, struggling or whatnot, right? 
And the thing is, I can make it do what it do, no matter what my situation is. You know what I mean? I'm a natural born hustler. So, I mean, not that I like being broke. It's not that I like not having anything. However, I can make it work for the time being with the with the big picture in mind, knowing that I'm going to get about the situation. But some people, they are born into money or they have an inheritance or trust fund or some shit. And if they make bad business um, decisions or whatnot, and then they fuck off the money and lose the money, they'll fuck around and blow their head off because they don't have a, a yacht. You know, they don't know how to react to that. They don't know how to downsize or like oh i can't have a yacht or i can't live in this expensive mansion anymore they have no idea how to comprehend you know and that's kind of what it reminds me of of kovalev is when someone stands up to the bully he he doesn't he kind of unfolds and unravels you don't he doesn't really know how to to adjust you know i know people like i got analogies all day but i know people who got out of jail like that too where they've been in the system so long they've been in prison incarcerated so long that they don't know how to live a normal life and stay away from shit so they end up going back to jail because they're like um you know it's almost hard for them to live a a straight life and not get involved with some bullshit or, or whatever so they end up doing stuff to get them right back in you know they're on probation or whatever and they do stuff to get right back in the pen because they don't know how to exist like that and that's kind of what it reminded me of Kovalev I don't know that if someone took his his bully powers away I don't think he is the same fighter like if you can last the second half and you stand your ground and you know go to war and that's what it is with a lot of punchers like big punchers you you notice that you know um I I can't really speak for Kovalev but he killed a man and I don't know how that affected him but he he got better you know Mike Perez killed someone in his career kind of it haunted him same thing with um emil griffin it seemed like the death of fighters it really bothered him but it didn't really look like it bothered kovalev you know what i mean because he actually did like his best work or whatever after that point but again that's just speculation but kovalev kind of it seems like he thrives off of that type of power like not just killing somebody but just thriving off of um, being feared and crusher and I'm kicking your ass and you know and he just didn't know how to handle it when it all came crashing down I remember he he tweeted out oh get ready motherfucker to Andre Ward I will end your boxing career you know what I mean and then when he couldn't make good with that he didn't know how to act he didn't know how to deal with that so he kind of lived in denial like oh Andre Ward son of judges uh, son of ref Tony Week. but the thing is Maybe in the first one, people were buying that. The second one, they're like, nah, bro, you got stopped. You didn't look the same. Ward never got knocked down. You just lost this one. And he didn't know how to deal with that. And then same thing with Leader Alvarez. Leader Alvarez probably watched the war fights like, oh, okay, if we get him into the second half, his stamina's not that good. We have a good size, um, light heavyweight. He can box. He can punch. You know, a lot of these Colombians have good punching power. So, you know, we'll weather the storm. And that's what happened. And now John David Jackson is reacting to it. So let me know what you guys think. It's, you know, it's a, it's a lesson to all boxers. Is nothing. You can't take anything for granted. No matter how big you get, you still have to work. And, you know, I tell myself that all the time. No matter how big my YouTube channel gets, I still got to remember where I come from. I got to remember who put me in the position. It's you guys, the fans. I can't just be like, if I see a fan, they're like, oh, hey, Ego, can I get a picture? And I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, and, and it's a problem for me. Because... You know, there's a time where I pray for this. Where I pray for things to go my way. So you, you never want to forget where you come from and get too big for the situation. You always remain humble and have some humility. And it looks like Kovalev may have lost that, you know. And on top of that, just the kind of racist antics and stuff. It, it just seemed like a nasty person and people overlooked that. So it is what it is. I think Kovalev, I can't tell you what another man can do, but from what John David Jackson is saying and from what I've already seen before this interview, I think it's going to be extremely hard for Kovalev to get back into prominence because the light heavyweight division is popping. You got Dimitri Bivo, he can fight his ass off with power, right? Undefeated, confident. Same thing, you got Arter Better B, if we already beat him in the amateurs, I think twice. 
and you know it just looks like Kovalev is a broken man you got Vodstick you have Adonis Stevenson you know he's been stopped too but that was a long time ago so I don't know I just think it's an uphill battle to be honest for Kovalev for a variety of reasons and a lot of what I've said John David Jackson is now saying so let me know what you guys think drop your thoughts in the comment section make sure you smash the like button can Kovalev bounce back John David Jackson says karma is a bitch and it's a classic tale of the bully getting bullied back and not liking it drop your thoughts in the comment section make sure you smash the like button as always hate comment and subscribe to next videos ego son so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing